Hey everybody, welcome to the post show. We just talked about Message in a Bottle, the Voyager episode. We weren't super crazy about it. Should I say, uh, Clay gave, I was, I was going to say spoilers, but uh, you gave it a two, I gave it a three. The patrons loved it. So here we are to answer a couple questions from their anger uh, directed towards us about this. Clay, how are you? Good? I'm not bad. I just saw the last video that went up. My uh, my shining cardigan got a lot of, a lot of. I didn't talk. get. I didn't know that it was the shining cardigan. Yeah, yeah. The, so I think someone the, the someone pointed from the that out. The floor. Yeah, <laughs> someone someone pointed it out, and then I think everyone connected the dots and jagged lines <laughs> in their heads. Um, I'm the one thing I'm noticing about the thumbnails is like, oh, I can't keep wearing my comfy shirt that I love because <laughs> it's like it's all that it's all that I wear. But it's we, little little does everybody know we record all of these in one day. Yeah, like, at one time. <laughs> it's like Jeopardy. We do five of them at a time. That's right. Just just bang these things out. I no, I did just, notice like, that the we record late at you, night. I'm, I'm in my comfy clothes at this time of recording. <laughs> I'm not wearing like my business casual khakis and, <laughs> and polo during the day. Did you do you choose what the images is are for the thumbnail? Yes, in terms oh, of like okay. what our okay. what our expression looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you purposely chose you yawning very. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I okay. had to. I had to go through and find you matching because you have, you have your head on, your hand on the back of your head because I was doing the same thing. So I found that. Yep. Nice. Yep. Um, I know we, we have to, I have to get into the habit of like, before we record, we just have to make like, like crazy wacky faces just so I can put those on the thumbnails because that's what YouTube's about. So let's go with our question from Discord. At 28, I've finally reached the testosterone threshold that allows me to grow a half decent facial hair for the first time in my life. This is from uh, Kyle Smooth as a baby seal Barrett. What are the pros and cons of bearded life that I should know about? Um, pros. Everybody, everybody takes you more seriously. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Your podcast will become the definitive podcast for opinions. Yeah, you'll start to. You, you won't realize it as, as as it's happening, but as soon as you go into a place populated by a number of people, you realize everybody now looks exactly like you. <laughs> <laughs> or you look like everybody else. Do you think your um, beard's getting pretty big there too? Man. I know. I'm, I'm, I feel I like it's grown three inches since the last time I saw you, which was like five days ago. <laughs> That's the the con is that once you stop shaving regularly, you're like, I can go another two months. I don't need to do. <laughs> I don't yeah. need to manage I, anything. I will say yes. The, the con that I have noticed is, I don't know. This might apply to just like regular haircuts and stuff too, but I yep. feel like it. I feel it more pronounced on, on for the beard is if you don't trim it or anything, you don't know what you look like until yes, you yeah. see like a picture of yourself. So no, you'll it's 100%. just like, yeah, you'll be like, Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it looks fine. And then you see a picture from like, you know, your uncle's funeral or whatever. And you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> I should have cleaned up. <laughs> yeah. I should have given that, give that a trim. Cause, cause I have photos during COVID and it's like, it's like uh, I just I have to look forward to the future where it's like everyone looked like this because no one went outside for a year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like it was that kind of a thing. But no, it's, it's kind of like uh, gaining weight or like um, yes, some change that's like it's just so gradual that you don't notice it until you look at something that was a year ago and you're like, oh my god, that's, that's totally yeah. different. Yeah. It's weird. It's very strange. During the pandemic, I actually, um, I uh, I had a, I don't think we were doing video during the pandemic, were we? No, no. <clears throat> Because I I, I I I completed a lifelong um, dream of shaving my beard into like Lemmy from Motorhead mutton chops, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which was fun uh, because I I hadn't seen my chin in twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, but then after I did it, I realized I hadn't seen the other chin in twenty years either. Right. So I kind of regretted it as soon as I did it. That's my con, actually, is that. Uh when I do cut it short, I don't like the way my chin looks anymore. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. been hidden for so long. And I'm like, I don't, I don't need to see it. I, I actually, I just, I fucked up one time when I was uh, trying to trim and I just, I just, I took too much off in one pass. I was like, well, mm. now I just have to shave it all off and then we'll go back. But I came out of the bathroom and Amy was just like, what the, what happened to you? And it's, she's like, your chin looks wrong. It's like, I, don't, I, mean, I have to wait for this to grow back. It's just not right. It's really weird. That's really a yeah. strange thing. Welcome to the club, Kyle. The I think cons. this is a long way of saying mustache all the way. Yeah. 
or just just, just the, the guy from Anthrax. Just just braid your chin all the way down. Yeah. That's that's yeah. a good that's a good classy look. Uh, the pros pros are you don't have to shave every day, which mm-hmm. I hate. The cons. It's kind of like having to get two haircuts, sort of. It's it's like an mm. additional level of haircut they have to do. So you have to pay the barber more. You're in the barber chair for much longer. Um, do you do? Do you get it trimmed at the at the barber? The, do you yeah. really? I've yeah. never done that. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not, I, I don't trust myself to do it. In the I, I could, I guess, if I had to go to like if I had something urgent to do tomorrow, I guess I would have to do it mm. myself. But I generally like to go to the barber. Because they give you like the hot towel and everything like that. It's like, oh, this is nice. I should do that at some point. Never done it. It's a treat. I would say, big con, uh, you you're gonna use a lot more napkins when you eat. Yep. That's a good indicator of when it's getting too long too. When you're like yeah. chewing on your hair and you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. The thing that's that sucks though is anytime I trim it, I, there's always like one piece I miss. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I got. I'm like, all right, this is gonna be fine. I'm just like, what the fucking <laughs> one that I can't <laughs> get stuck in your food. There's like a little bit of ketchup stuck on the, the hair that's sticking out. Yep. Yep. Uh, the second question from Christian says, Clay says Halloween is a very inconsistent franchise. What are examples of consistently good franchises? Was this, was this a real-time question we just got? <laughs> he just got it in the Discord. <coughs> so he says, what are examples of consistently good franchises? I I don't know if I would say consistently good, but... Um, the Friday the Thirteenth series is a much more consistent series. Okay. It's uh, you kind of they find the formula and they stick to it for the most part. And even when it gets weird, for the most part, there's only one that really goes off the rails, and that's the well, two if you count space. But even the space one sticks to the formula for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And the not uh, you know, Jason goes to hell is the only one that really goes off the beaten path. Um, but the rest of them are are pretty consistent as far as what. What they know what the series is. Yeah, they know what you know what to expect, and they they kind of execute it. You know, no pun intended. Halloween is um, Bond is like that too. I would say Bond is a consistent franchise. Bond is very consistent in that sense, for for better or worse. You know, yeah. like it's consistent to a fault. I think sometimes. Yep. Um, because when you get your twenty eighth Roger Moore movie, where you're just like it's a Mad Lib of James Bond stuff. It's like yeah. all right. Maybe we can mix this up a little bit. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Halloween is just, um, you know, it, it, it's 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 constantly having to reinvent itself. So every time after the first three movies, once John Carpenter is no longer involved, it becomes, all right, what are we going to do to try and jumpstart this thing again? And so then they start adding a bunch of stuff that gets kind of weird and, uh, and they, they kind of like abandon that. And then they do like, well, what if we did a sort of a sequel maybe because uh, it's the 20th anniversary and then they do a sequel to that and that doesn't really work. And so they abandon that and then they do yep. the remake and then that doesn't work. So they abandon that. You know, so it's it's very, very all over the place uh, as far as franchises go. Yeah. I, Bond was my answer for a consistent one. I guess, I mean... Nightmare would work too. I, I don't know them well enough to to say anything, but I I guess I can't think of anything else. What like uh, what's a long running thing that's been consistently okay? Um, yeah, it's interesting because like uh, franchises as a concept, I feel like is has only really picked up in the last like twenty years or so. Because there was like I feel like when if you talked about movie trilogies. 25 years ago you were talking about like three movie series yeah you were talking about godfather. star wars godfather uh indiana jones and that was mm-hmm. like it yeah and then you know the matrix came along and then that was okay well we got a new one and now it's like everything has three to five movies yeah yeah the matrix isn't interesting there's a lot of spin off there pokemon i think <laughs> pokemon. well i think the interesting thing right it's like well where what do you want to count? I think Bond is interesting because they do keep it pretty consistent. Yeah. Even though every movie has a different production and different team and different story and it doesn't connect. Because if you think of something like Batman, they've been make, making Batman movies for thirty five years. If you don't count the the TV stuff. Yeah. And that is 
Batman's a consistently good franchise. I guess I, I would. I, I would yeah, I, I guess I would say so. I think yeah. I, th- I was just going to say it's it's so different though because it it changes so wildly. Yeah, Mo- like when movie to movie or, or creator to creator in a way something like Bond doesn't. Oh, Mission Impossible. That's a very yeah, consistent M- franchise. Mission Impossible would be good. I'm a, I'm actually thinking of some now. Like I, I would say the the Final Fantasy video game series is a consistently oh, interesting. sure g- like good. Uh, yeah. There's some bad games, but it's consistently uh, worth checking out um batman yeah. arkham series was consistent for yeah talking video games yeah I, I think they're out there um i would mega actually man. i think the mega man yeah, that's <laughs> same game every time and every time it's great <laughs> it's, it's the perfect it's the perfection meme yeah I, th- I guess they're out there um and I, I would respect ones that change things a little bit more like i think that the the batman example is a better uh, one than Bond, just because Bond is does what it needs to do, it hits the points, and you, you get extra credit for trying to do something else. But they are out I guess, there. Yeah, if you look at Batman, if you're just talking about Batman movies, they are really only one stinker in there in 35 years, right? Like just the Batman, Batman and Robin, and Robin. The, Clo- the Clooney one. Yeah, yeah. All the other ones are pretty good for the most part. What's the other bad Schumacher one? Isn't there two bad Schumacher ones? Forever? Batman Forever, but that's that's much more. That's much better than Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin. Okay. I haven't seen it in a long time. Yeah, so I guess they're out there. Um, interesting, because I, I actually, going into the question, I would have thought that it would be harder to find consistently good franchises, but I don't think they are. So they're, they're out there. They exist. Hardee's. Uh, the burger joint? Yes. Or whatever that is? Yeah. I actually, I've never eaten at a Hardee's. I don't know if they're any good. What do you think about Arby's? Do you, do you have Arby's growing up? Uh, I've never had Arby's. I'm aware they have the meats, well, so if I ever need some, that's I know where to go. Yeah, that's, um, <coughs> horsey they, sauce it, too. It, it Delicious never looked, horsey sauce. It never looked very appealing to me. No, I loved it when I was a kid, but looking at it now, I'm like, oof. Yeah. Even though we didn't franchise, I'm like, ooh, I, I don't like the look of this building. <laughs> this is not. We gonna... didn't really have any of those more outside the box franchises around yeah. here. Yeah. I feel like Boston, the Boston area, is a very Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's place. Yeah. We only just got Chick-fil-A. There's one Chick-fil-A in Worcester. That's the only thing that moved we in. Got, we got... Uh, I remember the first Sonic that showed up. There was a line of cars for yeah. like a week the first yeah. time Sonic showed up. Does Krispy Kreme still exist? That was a big thing when Krispy Kreme it, came. Yeah. I don't... It doesn't exist here, I don't think, but it exists yeah. other places. In the South. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go to the South for all your... Uh, <clears throat> fattening fast food options that's that's the that's the uh the i could go for a waffle house around here we had there was chicken and waffles in uh we went to dc and it's just like this is so good what like why can't they just work up the the, i don't understand why they can't they can't work their way up i don't know weird anyway i guess that's it is there anything else (laughs) to talk about before we go we talked about franchise and we talked about the beards um, uh, Kyle says that you have to do thinner for the hundred Rotten Tomatoes episode. No, no, I won't. We won't be doing that, unfortunately. <laughs> and no, I guess, I guess, I guess that's it. I just had a um, me and uh, it's, it's been all the news. Um, there's been so many articles and things written about it. I, I find it fascinating. Um, I'm just gonna rant about it here for a little bit. We just gotta dip into Israel and Palestine at the end. <laughs> <laughs> just, just briefly. Just briefly touch on a few things. Uh, polyamory is big, and I oh, find it fascinating okay. that polyamory mm. is taking off. And I read some re- really good takedowns of it um, <laughs> recently just on the fact that it's like, it's such a, um, like it's like a struggle of the elite class, kind of, which I think is a pretty good mm. take on it. It's like you have to be, you have to have time. Like polyamory for people is like you have multiple romantic relationships that you go with at all. They, they all happen at the same time. And it's kind of like, right. a, you're, so you're in love with multiple people, or whatever. And this um, is not necessarily uh, everybody's in it together, right? This is just you have multiple I, things. No, I think that my <clears> understanding <throat> is that, well, I guess it depends on what you. Cor- like this uh, isn't like I have a wife and my wife and I have a girlfriend, and together my wife and my girlfriend and I, I have a boyfriend. I think it can be. I think that it can, can be, yes. be it. Yeah. We okay. Amy has two. I only know one. Well, the the thing that's funny is that it came out that like some 
survey came out and they said like 22% have been in a polyamorous relationship, which I was like, that seems incredibly high. I, I think, listen, if the, if this is, if that's true, go with God, do whatever you want. I feel like that's college kids not understanding what dating is. I would, I would agree. And I, it does bring up the like, what level of commitment are you talking right. about? Are you like right. dating a bunch of people at the same time or right? Cause, cause my, my definition would be you are in a relationship that is like consistent with this other person. Yeah. You've got four toothbrushes in your bathroom. Exactly. And, and we only know they ain't your kids. We, we only know. <laughs> I just like to use a different brush for each quadrant of my mouse because that's, <laughs> that's what the app fair. tells me to do. Yeah. We only know one polyamorous couple, although apparently we know more because one out of every five couples we know is in a polyamorous relationship. Oh, but they only should one, all meet. It'd be they'd have a great time together. <laughs> there's only one outed, and um, I'm just I, I just can't I can't imagine how this works. It's just it's <laughs> beyond. I don't understand how people. I think people are deluding themselves honestly into thinking <laughs> that this is working. This can't. The the best thing about being in a steady relationship is the trust that gets built and then Mm. you have complete comfort with the other person. Right. That completely evaporates the minute you're like, where are you going? You're going out to see Ted. (laughs) Like, and even, even if you think you're, even if you think you're on the level, there's no way that this shit is not spinning around in your head down the line. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like in order, in order for it to work, you have to legitimately, be fine with whatever your other half, or in this case, quarter to an eighth, depending on Correct. your lifestyle. Correct. That's <laughs> how diluted we need to get here. <laughs> is is out there doing. And if, if you can do that, that's fine. That's sure. Great. Whatever. I don't More think power people can you. do that. I, don't, I, think I, it's, I think it's rare. What yeah, I, I, I would be interested in. Psychopath. <laughs> what I would be interested to know is what the average length of one yeah. of those relationships is. I'm not saying it would be long. I'm not saying it would be short. I would just saying I would be curious to know if there's any numbers on that. Well, this other couple, they had a thing where they're in this polyamorous relationship, right? And the other one of the other people who is outside of this, outside of their marriage, right, mm-hmm. fell in love with one of them in the marriage and had to mm-hmm. break it off because didn't want to engage in the polyamory, right? So there's like this thing right, of like, sure, I only sure. want the yeah. one person, but to get right. the person, I'll pretend to go through this whole charade of sure. polyamory. And it's really, I just, I don't know. I watched like a couple YouTube things of it, and the people who are in it are just so... Wes, we just, know it wasn't YouTube you were looking for these videos on, all right? <laughs> the people in them are so... You're just like, there's something off with you. You're just not, you're just not in a good headspace. Like you're, you're either depressed or you're trying to like you know fix something that's broken within you and also to be to be fair i don't believe, I, don't believe I, in I, it. I i'm not um i'm curious about the numbers but honestly one-on-one relationships monogamous relationships 50 percent divorce rate so we don't fucking know anything either so i'm just i'm just curious as to what the what the uh endurance of these things is I can't imagine there's can't imagine there's much and the, the, i mean the journal did a piece on them and they were all older you know, it was weird. It was just, it was just like fifty-year-old well, people doing it. That's interesting because I feel like at that point, you kind of understand things more as far as how relationships do and can work, and so maybe you are a bit more comfortable with the idea of, yeah, I want to be in a relationship, but you know, I want to get married and do whatever you want. But, but you know, like I feel like there's, as as you get older, maybe there's a little bit more um, maturity in how you are able to handle that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So that doesn't really surprise. It's (laughs) because I I think it's a young person's, I would think it's a young person's game more than anything. Yeah, you would think so. But when you say that, it doesn't really, because I was going to say, it reminds me of, uh, be more um, jealousy, I think when younger, but yeah, it reminds me of uh, when we were all staying up with the volume on one, watching real sex on HBO. Mm -hmm. And, Every single one of us being horrified that everything they covered was just like old, dangly, old sunken, bald <laughs> old people, and like obviously that's great. I'm I'm glad that they're having fun. But when you're you know 
15 years old watching real sex on HBO. That's not what you're looking for. No. But uh, <clears throat> that's Never. the thing that was always so crazy about it. it was like, we're going to a nudist camp, and it's all 60 and 70-year-old people. And it's like, all right. Clearly, there's something going on where you get to a certain point, and you have a better or a, a more um, nuanced take on how relationships and sexuality work, I guess, for some of us. Some of us, it goes the complete other way, and then they yeah. get elected to you know office and ruin everything for everybody. Yeah, I don't... <clears throat> I don't think it's like morally wrong or anything. I don't think that there's like sure. some reason that you shouldn't do it. I just don't see any situation where it's not disguising something else. It just it's and like the yeah I don't know. There's a there's that famous divorce lawyer who's been doing the podcast rounds, and he I mean he admits that it's a biased sample size, but he says in in the divorce cases where polyamory is brought up before they get divorced, it's always like a last ditch to sort of salvage sure. the relationship in sure. some way, to be like, let's try something. And I can see that happening, but it's just... Oh, I, I, maybe, and, but the, the other thing about getting older is the reason I would say it's a young person's game is because when you're younger, risking, risking everything <laughs> for sex seems like a better deal when you're younger. You know what I mean? When you when you're older, I think it's like, ah, like you have sex with a, a well, different person. Is it's like is that well? The, but you're you're assuming that's the only driver, and like when you're older, you there's probably other drivers that might be more enticing or attractive as to why you would want to have multiple partners. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the you conversation know? you're talking about, like sure, just different hobbies, or you know, if your wife or husband goes to work during the day and you don't want to be alone in case you slip and fall in the shower great to have another person it's good, to, good to have somebody have somebody around why get a life alert thing when you can yell i've fallen and i can't get up to the <laughs> to your third <laughs> yep no just seems like a lot of work I'm in the relationship because I don't want to do the work anymore. I'm so comfortable. Sure, why, right. why would I want yeah. to date some like you go out with so, go out with a woman who's like emotionally unstable, like it was like when we were 20, <laughs> and you have to talk to them about this shit. And uh, one of our other friends brought up a good point: if you're in one of these relationships and your boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you, right? Is your spouse supposed to f care? Are they supposed to be like? Are they supposed to be like mm. devastated by this, or are you just be like, well, what? like? There, there's, yeah. I just think it poisons every. If you're in a relationship where you're supposed to be trusting and able to confide in the other person, I wouldn't be able to give you emotional support in that situation because I would not be unhappy about that happening. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. And that's, that just seems twisted. So, and I can't imagine being in a situation where you have to, your other half comes home from a date and then wants to talk to you about that about that date yeah that's, i mean unless that's torture a, unless that's torture. a kink you have or whatever that's fine but just like i can't i can't imagine anything i would care about less than that no, that, that would be that would be torture for me even so. if it didn't bother me like emotionally i just that's something it's like i don't care i don't want i don't care oh interesting i don't want to hear it you listen you get one work was, or your boyfriend the, did you right? get the fish or the, the fish or the steak yeah no, that's weird. But one out of five of our listeners are in polyamorous relationships, so we'll hear uh, from them further down the line. I hope it's going great for them. How, the, your friends, who are, are they happy? They say they are. Yeah. <laughs> they say they are. Now, are you friends with the whole crew or just... No, I, it, they're, they're my wife's friends. I don't know anyone. They live very far away. So she only saw them when she gotcha. went to visit uh, somewhere recently. Um, so I don't know anything. I don't know any of the other poly, poly Annas or whatever you would want to call them. But it just seems I only got so much time in the day. Just <laughs> I, don't, I, mean, I only text with You do Amy. a lot in the day. I, 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 <laughs> Imagine if you if you quit your second job, you could have another girlfriend. But then I'd have to get the second job to pay for bringing her places That's and true. stuff like that. That's like, true. are you kidding me? That's true. Yep. Yeah, but like it's just just a tremendous amount. All for all, uh, like, and that's why it comes about all for the sex. Just 
I don't know. And like, if you've got kids, imagine if it was you, you, yeah, you and and Amy in this situation. Even if like you're cool with it, right? Even mm-hmm. if you're both cool with it, you've got three young children. If Amy or you was like, "Hey, uh, I'm going on a date. I know the kids are sick, but I'm just I'm just gonna go." No, it's that, that's, you know? that, that, <laughs> I, I think I think it just brings up so many <clears throat> fights just about yeah. the extra scheduling. Like you're saying, yeah. even if you're cool with it, it's like, no, you can't go. Like we have obligations here. That and if have like to take one off. of the one of you is dating. Like a few people, but the other one isn't. That's probably going to breed right, yeah. resentment, you know? Yep. One of you is more attractive than the other one. <laughs> so. That's, yeah, what I, uh, I've i heard to say the, 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 the situations where it comes up as a choice in an otherwise monogamous relationship, it, it's always one person who wants that and the other yeah, one doesn't. Yeah. No, that's it's, the not, only, it's not like it's a mutual thing. It's the like, only other one I know saying is... Yes, to save the, the marriage or whatever. It's not gonna yeah. Work. That's the, we don't I don't know them, but the, that's the only other examples that I've heard of because we, me and Amy have been so interested in talking to other people about this. It's, it's other ones that are right before they broke up, they tried something yeah. like this, and it just didn't doesn't do anything. I don't know. Cheaper than therapy, I guess. Yeah, certainly more effective. You get a result uh, immediately, or maybe you don't. I don't know. I, I mean, because. Yeah, I mean, just, it is very, because I don't think it's Are in the- Are you considering it, it? Is that what you're thinking about? No, I'm just, I'm thinking of like in the um, in the gay male community, it's not considered polyamory, really. You know, it's, it's like, it's weird that it's very mm. definitional that you have to be in a relationship where like sexuality is more open amongst young gay men just sure. because of the way testosterone works and everything like that. But they don't. I don't hear about that as being polyamorous, which is interesting. Mm. It's just, you know, it's like a, you're making a decision that you want to lock down a relationship with this person for some reason. So, yeah. Anyway, we're done. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Tell you and your second wives to, to have a good night. The only, the only Star Trek, po- uh, co- the only Star Trek podcast you're going to hear this conversation. <laughs> <on> probably <laughs> Next week, Israel. After that, what do we think of Putin's interview with Tucker Carlson? <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Take that, Captain's Log, (laughs) you hacky bastards. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time.